Welcome to the Daily Grace Podcast. I'm Shelby. And I'm Crystal. We are a part of the content team here at the Daily Grace Co. And our mission is to equip disciples in the Word. And every Tuesday, we share what we're learning from Scripture with you right here on the podcast. Because we believe that deep Bible study, sound doctrine, and rich theology are not just for the seminary student or pastor, but are accessible for all believers. So whether you listen on the go or sitting down with pen and paper in hand, we hope these conversations will teach you something new about God and His Word and to remind you that the gospel changes everything. Have you ever asked, where is God in the midst of my suffering? Does He see me? Does He hear me? Let us assure you that God is with you. He sees you and he hears your prayers. In fact, God is present in every single detail of your life. This is what we learn through the book of Job. And through our new Bible study on the book of Job called Sacred Suffering, you will see that God is worthy of your praise in all seasons, even the most difficult ones. Sacred Suffering is a four-week study that will give you a gospel-centered perspective on suffering and its role in your faith journey. It will teach you to bring your doubts, fears, and your questions to God, and it will give you confidence in God's sovereignty over evil in your life and in the world surrounding you. You can learn more about Sacred Suffering at the link in the show notes or at thedailygracecode.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Daily Grace Podcast. This is Shelby, and I'm joined as always by my friend and co-host Crystal. Hey Crystal. Hey Shelby. Okay, we've been talking through a lot of favorite episodes of ours I'm very excited for this one because I actually don't know what episode we're going to talk about. So we're choosing some of our personal favorites. So today is going to be Shelby's personal favorite. So it's going to be a surprise for me. And we haven't told each other we might have chosen the same episode and we're going to find out in real time. <laughs> that is what's happening. So share with us your favorite episode. I'm just proud of us with how much we've grown as podcast hosts because... When we first started, the thought of like surprising oh, each other with something like on air and we'd like immediately respond to it, we would have been so terrified no. by that. But at yeah. this point, we're like, that sounds fun. Yeah, Let's so surprise fun. each other. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I have to say that I kind of cheated. Uh-oh. How do you cheat in something like this? <laughs> I'll explain. I had a really difficult time picking just one all-time favorite episode, but I did pick one, Okay. But it's part of a series. I want to talk about the whole series in this episode. Okay. Do you have any thought of what it is yet? Um, I have some thoughts, but you should okay. keep going. <laughs> okay. So it's actually a series that we did last summer on mistakes that we've made in Bible study. Mm, okay. And if you listened with us last summer, or maybe you knew and you haven't heard this at all, but we did short episodes. They were 15 minutes. A really fun part of these episodes is that we shared our favorite thing in 15 seconds or less at the start, (laughs) and we timed each other. I forgot about that. Like, we got out a stopwatch and, like, timed each other. Talk about stressful. That was very stressful. (laughs) And we ended up doing, I think, six total episodes where we just talked pretty vulnerably about the mistakes that we've made in Bible study because we wanted to just kind of debunk this idea that if you will make a mistake at all, that you shouldn't try Mm -hmm. to study the Bible. And so my favorite episode in this series was when we talked about treating the Bible like a spiritual self-help book and how that is a mistake that we have made. And when I sat down to think about all the ways in which I have approached the Bible as a means to just kind of give me a little encouragement to get through the day, I came up with like a pretty convicting list Mm -hmm. of treating it like a crystal ball, like I want the Bible to just tell me yes or no, or like tell the future, or coming to the Bible looking for a three-step plan, like Mm. a quick fix to my situation. But the more we talked about it, the more we talked about coming to the Bible to behold the Lord Mm -hmm. and to find rest in who he is, not necessarily getting quick answers to our problems. So that can totally change the way that we study the Bible. Well, the good news is, well, one, that's a fantastic choice, but two, that is different than my choice. Yes. So we okay. we succeeded in our task. So as you're listening to this, go back and listen to the others. We'll link the very first of that series, and then you can just work your way through. They're fantastic episodes. Again, very short, really practical. We get to the point, and we hope they are encouragement and benefit to you as you study God's Word. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to our summer series, Mistakes We've Made in Bible Studies. We're having so much fun talking about all the times we've gotten it wrong, surprisingly. (laughs) 
I'm not sure I've ever so said that days. sentence before. <laughs> but we're back today to talk about another mistake that we've made many, many times. But first, we are going to do favorite things. We're doing them in 15 seconds or less because we're trying to keep these episodes short for you so you can listen on the go in the summer. So I have my 15 second timer. Crystal, are you ready? Yes. Okay. On your mark, get set, go. Okay, my favorite thing is the Takarta Bible app. It's $5 a month, but you have access to 150 different resources on my phone, on my iPad, study Bibles, notes, different translations. It's really helpful on Sunday morning as I'm listening to a sermon to pull up notes. Wow, good job. Yes. I was watching the the time. I don't know what that app was. When you mentioned it just a second ago, I asked you if it was like a clothing app where I could find cute outfits. <laughs> no, not and quite. It's, not. it's, so. not. it's the Bible. <laughs> it's a little different. Better? But yes. Better. Okay. Better. Yes. yes. Okay. Are you ready? I am All ready. Right. What is your favorite thing? And go. My favorite thing, no shock, is a book I'm reading. It's called Never Split the Difference, Negotiating as if Your Life Depended Upon It. It's written by a former international FBI hostage negotiator, Whoa. and it's so fascinating and super helpful. Oh, I didn't think you were going to make it. You did, because that title is long. <laughs> I know, but I need five more seconds. I need to clarify what I'm negotiating. Okay, go ahead. It's bedtime with my five-year-old. <laughs> that feels like the right book for our situation. Yeah. Oh, I love it's it. It's <laughs> really, it's like the psychology behind negotiation. It's fascinating. Is it a short book or a long book? Medium. What's medium to you? I think it's a total of six-ish hours on audiobook. I'm listening to it on audiobook. Okay. Okay. So maybe yeah. it might be eight hours. I can't quite remember. Okay. That's not too bad. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, this week's episode is a mistake that we feel is really important because we feel like it's really woven into the fabric of like Western American Christianity. Mm -hmm. And this mistake is reading the Bible like a spiritual self-help book. So Shelby, can you unpack what that means for us? Yeah. And we really debated how to title this episode. Yeah. This was kind of an idea floating around and we're like, how do we put concrete terms to this? So, but we decided to call it reading the Bible, like a spiritual self-help book. And so I actually want to just define self-help because I think that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. So I pulled up just Miriam Webster dictionary and it defines self-help as the action or process of bettering oneself or overcoming one's problems without the aid of others, especially the coping with one's personal or emotional problems without professional help. And, you know, if you're anything like me, you hear that definition and you're like, that's who I want to be. I don't want to have to rely on anyone else. I don't want to have to be dependent on anyone else. I want to be able to overcome all my problems on my own. We're just like fiercely independent people, especially in the American West. But if we're not careful, we can begin to integrate the Bible into that kind of lifestyle that we want to live. And so we come to the Bible as if it is a tool that we will use to solve our own problems rather than coming to it as the divinely inspired word of God that was authored by the God on whom we are totally yeah. and utterly dependent. And so hopefully that kind of clears up what we mean by this. I want to tell a super short story about when I was first introduced to this idea in my early 20s, I, for the first time, like went to see a Christian counselor and it was insanely helpful. We're like huge fans of Christian yes. counseling here. But after about an hour of talking through things with her and just sharing some different things, at the end of the session, she just asked me, do you see God as a tool that helps you achieve your goals? Ooh. And I was speechless because my answer was yes. And I had never realized that that was the way that I was viewing God. And it was incredibly convicting. And that was really a pivotal moment for me and a turning point for me. And so I think even as we go through this episode, just to consider that question or something similar to that, like, who is God to you? Is he the being on whom you are totally and utterly dependent? Or is he just a tool that you keep in your back pocket mm. that helps you get to the life that you're trying to achieve? Yeah. What a profound question for that counselor to ask, because yeah. I don't think any of us would think that that's how we treat the Lord or even treat scripture, but it's mm -hmm. often how we do it. And so I think that's why we're so passionate about being involved in the local church, being mm -hmm. in community, and just what we get to do here at Daily Grace. We don't often see those blind spots in ourselves. So we need to be in the word. We need to be in community. So then we can avoid making the mistake of reading the Bible as if it's just like one more thing that's going to help us. It's mm -hmm. like one tool that we have at our disposal instead of this is our very life. So yeah. Let's talk about the difference between reading the Bible like spiritual self-help and then reading it as, like you said, the divinely inspired word of God. What is the difference? 
Yeah, I think this is important to talk through because even if we've just defined it and we understand that definition, I think knowing what it looks like will help us identify when it's happening in our lives. So all I can share is personally what this looks like for me. This might look different for you or for anyone listening, but here's what happens and here's how I know that I'm looking to the Bible for spiritual self-help instead of looking at it as the divinely inspired word of God. I'll approach the Bible like a crystal ball. I want it to tell me yes, no, or what I might happen in the future. <laughs> like, I just want to shake it up and I want the answers to fall out, right? When I approach the Bible with a self-sufficient attitude, like I can handle anything, but it's really nice to have a pat on the back from God to start mm-hmm. my day, you know? Yeah. Ugh, ugh. That happens more than I'd like to admit, you know? When I approach the Bible looking for a three-step plan or a quick fix to my Mm -hmm. solution, that's a total self-help attitude. And I would also say if I'm approaching the Bible, like looking for validation for the choices that I've made, like you'll notice that all these things are really self-centered that we're talking about so far, like (laughs) self-help, self-centered. And one more thing I think that plays into this too is I know I'm reading the Bible like self-help. If I come away with a checklist of, okay, here's the four things I'm going to change and do better after reading this. Now, should the Bible be transformative? Yes. It's way different. And we'll talk about this in just a second Mm -hmm. to have a checklist or to have an encounter with God through which you say, wow, Mm -hmm. in worship of him, I have to change some Mm -hmm. things. Yeah. As you were going through that list, I was like, ooh, I feel convicted. (laughs) Oh, yes, I've done this. And so I think that's why we've enjoyed these episodes so much. It allows us to even process the ways that we are not relying on the Lord. We're not relying on the spirit yeah. for, for spiritual growth. We're tempted to rely on ourselves. Honestly, I feel like for me, looking at that list, going for a quick fix, I want it to be fixed immediately. Yeah. If I feel bad, I want to feel good. If I am discouraged, I want to be encouraged. And so I'm going to, yeah. what's the verse that talks about fill in the blank? And yes. I'm going to look at all those verses out of context and be like, okay, I don't feel a ton better, <laughs> but I tried. And then I move on and I'll Google or I'll go to mm-hmm. Instagram. And yeah. so it's almost like I'm not treating the Bible as sufficient for mm, life so and godliness. And so so I love being able to talk through this. What are some other things that you feel like are going to help us as we approach God's word in the right way instead of approaching it from that self-centered, self-help perspective? Mm. Yeah. So again, just talking from my own experience, some ways that I know I'm approaching God's word, looking for him and not for self-help and quick answers are that I'm okay if I leave my time in God's word, having all the same questions that Mm. I had when I came in. I'm content simply that I was with God and that I know him now more than I did before I opened my Bible. That's not always easy, right? Another one is that I approach the Bible with humility, just knowing that I am fully dependent on the Lord and coming to it almost as a source of life. Mm. Like, I need this today. Like without this, I won't be okay today. God, I need your word. I think another one is just submitting myself to the Lord's sovereignty instead of looking for a quick fix. And so usually when I'm coming into God's word, I might be looking for that quick fix. But then in reading, I'm reminded that, you know what? God is in control. He's sovereign over my life. I trust him in that. Like we said before, even when I don't have all the answers. I think another one is just, approaching the Bible with the expectation that I'm going to be convicted of my sin because I know that I am not a sinless person. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we can read the Bible and we think, I've pretty much got it together, but this might help me today. Yes, (laughs) But instead going like, man, I know that there's brokenness in me that I'm unaware of. And so just holding the Bible up almost like as a mirror Mm -hmm. and letting it show you in truth the reflection of where that sin is at in your life. And then lastly, when I read the Bible as God's divinely inspired word and not just as a self-help book, I come away in awe of God. I come away with a desire to pray and with a desire to worship. And that includes adjusting my actions by the power of the Spirit. You know, if I don't end my Bible time in prayer saying, Lord, help me to live out what I've read today, then I'm way too dependent on myself and way not dependent enough on the Lord. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, well, let's just go to God's word and see what it has to say in this. So we're going to read First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. It says this, Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So what conclusions would we draw if we read this like, 
it's just one of those tools. It's our spiritual self-help. How would we read this? Yeah, I feel like it's really important to give an example in this yeah. episode of what this looks like, because again, we might not always realize that this is taking place. So I like this verse because it literally says, for this is God's will for you. So if I'm reading this like spiritual self-help, I'm like, oh, that's the goal, which I must work towards mm -hmm. God's will for me. Like I now have a direction for my self-help to travel mm -hmm. in. And then we probably immediately think, wow, though, rejoice always. Pray constantly, give thanks in everything. I've failed in that quite a few times. And so self-help believes in like cause and effect, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I do the right things, then the right outcomes will happen. And so if we apply that to these verses, then we might be like, okay, well, I need to start rejoicing, always praying constantly and giving thanks in everything so that my life will right itself in the areas that it's wrong. Or we might think, oh, because I've not done those things, that's why my life is off track or that's why I'm experiencing hardship or difficulty right now. And so really what that is, is moralism and moralism is just fundamentally opposed to the gospel. Mm -hmm. Moralism reduces life to a set of principles when which followed give you the outcome that you desire mm -hmm. or make you into the type of person that you should be. But the gospel actually tells us that we were dead in our trespasses. Mm -hmm. We couldn't take one step towards becoming righteous and holy without the salvation of Jesus Christ. And so I think it's so, so, so important to read this, not in a, a checklist type of way, like, oh, this is what I need to do for God to be pleased with me, but to read this in light of the gospel. Yeah. And I wanted to even go back to the definition that you read earlier about self-help, that it is, you know, overcoming problems without the aid of others. And so even I can go to a verse like this and think, okay, rejoice always. Well, that means I need to be happy. God wants me to be happy. That's God's will is I'm going to be happy, pray constantly. I'm not good at that, but maybe I'll just like here and there be like, okay, God, help me be happy. Help me. You know, like when we're not reading in the context community without needing the help of others and the help of the spirit, we're reading this in very different ways mm -hmm. and we're misinterpreting what God's will is for yeah. our lives. And so we will have another episode kind of going a little bit more into the value of reading with others. But I think it's just, it's so good for us to recognize where are those gaps in the way that we come to God's word and just the posture of our hearts, because then that's going to allow us to then come to God's word, read it in context and understand what is God's will. It really is our sanctification, right? Mm -hmm. And these are the ways in which he does that. So, so how can we avoid coming to God's word in this way? How can we help our heart posture come in knowing humbly like we're coming to God in his word versus we're coming to help ourselves to make ourselves feel better. Yeah. So I think there's a number of things that can be really helpful with this. I think one, and this should be the goal of Bible study always, but anytime we approach the Bible, you know, our primary goal should be knowing God and not seeking circumstantial answers. Mm -hmm. And so if we can shift our focus in Bible study to just simply be the Lord. And what do I learn about him through the passage of scripture? How should I respond to that? What does this passage say about me as a human and how humans should respond to the Lord? And so I talked about it earlier, but it's just this total shift. Like Bible reading isn't about me. Bible reading is about God because the Bible is about God. And so I think that's one of the biggest things, you know, as I was processing through just like, how, how do we actually do this? Like, how do we approach the Bible, not self-centered, but in a God-centered way? Isaiah 55, and these are probably common verses, but Isaiah 55, 8 through 11 came to mind. And it just says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I mean, right there, just simply just a correction, like, the thoughts and intentions and desires that we have in our minds, like they will never be 100% in sync with the Lord's. And so we have to know that coming to scripture. But then it continues on as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And I love this as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire. And so I think we have to remember that God and his word, obviously there's context to these verses. These are in Isaiah, but we also learn a principle from this. And that's that God's word always accomplishes what he desires for it to accomplish. 
And so the Bible, I think we need to ask, what is God's purpose behind this? And we've get, had so many episodes where we try and teach you how to do that, even some in this series, some others that we can link in the show notes for you. But we have to come to the Bible desiring that God's will might be accomplished in our lives and not that our will might be accomplished mm. in our lives. Mm. And we are really passionate here at Daily Grace. We want to help resource you in being able to do this, to be able to come to God's word in the right posture, in the right way, and to be able to draw out the truths that are revealed in scripture versus the truths that we sometimes try to add to it or what we're looking for in the text. We want to help you find what's actually in the text. And so we have a couple of resources that we think would be really helpful. If you're really wanting to grow in this area, we have a great booklet called Faith Questions and the subtitle is Truth. So we have a whole series. This one's on truth. And a lot of what we were talking about today is really kind of a cultural way, a cultural Christianity and a cultural way of coming to God's word. And so this book is going to help you see like, what is biblical truth and how do we find it? Yeah. And we find it in God's word. And that's going to help you just walk through that on your own. And then we have another resource. I feel like we mentioned a lot, but it's very good. And it is search the word. That resource is going to help you to know how do you handle God's word? What are the things that you should be looking for? Because if we don't know what we're looking for, we're just going to go to our natural bents, which is mm -hmm. like, how does this apply to me? You know, what are the things mm -hmm. I'm going through? And we run the risk of misunderstanding what we see in God's words. We find those two resources, I think, could be really helpful in this. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll make sure we link all those things in the show notes. We're so thankful that y'all have been along the ride for us in this series. We have a couple episodes left. We're very, very excited about those. So be sure you tune in the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, you can follow us on Instagram at Daily Grace Podcast. We'd love to interact with you there. And other than that, we'll see you next week. Bye.